Hey guys, before we get started, I just want to take a quick second to apologize about the audio quality. One of our secondary mics decided to not work just after the intro. And so as a result, you just hear me on one of the other mics. I think it's on his lapel mic. So bear with it and I hope you like the video. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. We're joined today with a special guest, Dominic from Leguero Loco. Hi guys. And today we're gonna to show you how to troubleshoot a couple common problems that you would have on a printer, much like the CR10. We've loaded the printer up with neat filaments red and we've intentionally misleveled the bed. That side of the bed is a little low right now and this is a little high. We're gonna print a bed leveling STL, like a calibration file, that will print a border and a couple little circles at the corners so we can see what an unlevel bed looks like. So you may notice that on this side of the bed where it's way too high, we're not even extruding filament at all. In some cases, you'll hear the extruder motor click. Mm -hmm. And then on the far side, we're kind of extruding into midair more or less. Yeah, exactly. And we can see a lot of filament stuck on the nozzle, so. Right. But it's not adhering to the bed at all, it's just sitting at the end of the nozzle, and then the nozzle and is just getting covered. It covered. doesn't stick to the bed also. So let's go about correcting this. Let's just cancel this print. Whenever you're doing bed leveling, especially if you're using the paper method and not like an auto leveling, you wanna make sure that both your nozzle and your bed are up to temperature. This is because metals and glass expand as they're heated and that distance between the nozzle and the bed will change as everything expands. So Dominic is going to, once this reaches temperature now, Dominic's going to Bring the nozzle oh, to the front corner and go around the bed corner to corner, making sure there's a little bit of drag on that piece of paper. Yeah, exactly. Be sure that when you, uh, but was before leveling, be sure to clean the, the nozzle because, because if there's some uh, filament at the end of the nozzle, the paper will scrape, but it will be the filament, not the, not the nozzle. So be sure to clean up the filament before, or you can just pull up a little bit the filament, and for example, two or three millimeters, and this way you will not get this kind of residue at the end of your nozzle. I use the printer's menu uh, under prepare, there's level corners after you've gone to auto home. In this case, we're using the TH3D firmware. So the stock firmware may have a slightly different menu structure, but if you do level corners, it first starts at this corner and then you hit next corner and it will proceed through corner to corner. And at each corner, you should be using the paper to check the level. Okay, first just insert the paper under the nozzle and unscrew until you feel a little bit of tension, a resistance. So the paper must uh, pass freely, but you may feel the nozzle on the paper, just a little tension, not much. And when you're good to go, next go to corner. the next corner. If you have some filament of paper, just use the other side of the paper. Same so as you remember, that side was the low side, so there's not even any resistance until Dominic has unscrewed that screw quite a bit. Okay. So as you change each corner, you're influencing the other corners as well. So by raising this side, you would inadvertently raise this one just a little bit because you've taken off some of that angle. So you're probably best to go around twice, once once you've got everything kind of figured out, and then a second time just to confirm that you're perfectly level. Now we've got this bed perfectly level, or so we think, and we're going to confirm that by printing that STL one more time. So Jason, just before starting print, yeah. starting printing, so be sure the glass is clean. So you can use maybe alcohol or acetone to clean your bed. If it's a glass bed, use uh, maybe alcohol. If it's a um, um, Biltac or PE, you can use alcohol 
but just lightly, al slightly alcohol, just don't flood. Yeah, <laughs> don't pour it on there. Exactly. Yeah, we just want to make sure that any of the oils from our fingers or our hands, as we were touching the bed, are removed. Otherwise, those spots aren't going to stick at all, pretty much no matter how level it is. So, let's try this one more time. So here we are about uh, 15 minutes later or so and the test print is done and we'll get some close-ups of this but all of the squares are buttery smooth and equally squished against the glass. And if you check any of the individual lines they're pretty well stuck. It is a single layer so I've hit it with my nail and it moved it a tiny bit but they are they are very well stuck to the glass. Uh, so Dominic, you did a great job. Thank you, thank you. And during the print, if you see that the, 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 the material doesn't stick very well, so you can adjust slightly the screw under the bed, but just one, maybe... Sixteenth of one a turn. Yeah, yeah, exactly, at time. time. Lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. Uh, yeah, yeah. lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. Yeah, okay. you got to remember which orientation to turn it to bring the bed up versus down. It's especially confusing when you're reaching around from behind the printer. A little easier when you're standing in front. Yeah. Even if you have, if you have uh, auto leveling like BL Touch or proximity sensor, it's always a good thing to have a leveled bed. So start with a basic leveling, and after that, just go with the BL Touch doing its job. So yeah, your auto leveling sensor should really just be able to get you that last extra ten percent of accuracy. You should be able to reasonably level your bed on your own and then let that just yeah. pick up the extra spot. The BL Touch will not compensate for a uh, one centimeter difference between this side and this side, just slight difference, so. All right, let's move on to the next issue. Another common issue you'll have, especially if you're using something like a direct drive extruder and you've forgotten to change your settings from your Bowden setup, you might have six millimeter retraction and you'll end up with a clogged nozzle. So let's take a look at how to troubleshoot that. So sometimes you can end up with a micro clog, and one of the first indications that that has happened is if you go to extrude some filament and it curls as it comes out of the nozzle instead of coming out straight. So if you use your repair menu and you move axis, choose the extruder, and just extrude 10 millimeters or so, you should see it come straight out of the nozzle. Not curled like that. There. So it should come basically straight down out of the nozzle and it's not curling any direction. If it was, that's indicative of a microclog and we might want to unclog that. It could be much worse and we get no extrusion whatsoever. Yes, if you have a microclog or a complete clog of your nozzle, so there's many possibilities. First, you can heat up a little bit more your nozzle. So if, for example, you are printing at 215, you can try at 240 to make sure that the filament is uh, coming out of the nozzle. If it doesn't work, maybe you have a hard particle on it. So you may try with needles, but be careful. You may ruin, ruin your uh, nozzle with that. So with the needle, uh, just put the needle inside the nozzle, turning slightly. Don't forget to remove your filament first. And remove the needle and try to extrude uh, some uh, maybe 10 millimeters of filament. If you still have a clog or a micro clog, so you may have to open your hot and assembly. So the first thing, the, the more easier part is to remove the nozzle himself. You just unscrew it, uh, make sure it's clean with nozzle, just clean the nozzle, uh, with a needle, clean the nozzle and put it back. Be careful, it could be out, it should be out, because when you uh, reassemble it, be sure that the nozzle uh, is at least at 160 degrees, uh, or 200, maybe 200 degrees. So tighten it against the heat break instead of the heat block. If you're uh, tightening it uh, on the heat block, you're, you're sh for, sh for sure you'll get a leak uh, between the uh, heat sink and the uh, heat block. So that's the first thing to do. If you still have a clog, the clog could be inside the heatsink. So 
To clean it, just remove the PTFE connector with the, the PTFE tubing and look inside to see if there are some uh, pieces on it. So with the needle, you have to clean it uh, a little bit more and uh, just uh, be sure that there's no clog inside the PTFE tubing too. If you have some clog into the PTFE tubing, so you may heat a little bit the PTFE tubing or just change it. It's probably easier to change the PTFE tube. Um, you may have a clog in the heat brake too, so it's a little bit more complicated because some of them have a little PTFE, a PTFE tubing inside. So if you want to unclog it, you, you'll probably broke uh, break the PTFA tube, so. Yep. We've covered changing nozzle in a lot of detail in a previous video. I believe we did it on a, um, an Ender 3 and a Wan Hao uh, i3 Mini. Um, but as Dominic said, you want to make sure that you're tightening that nozzle against the heat break, and you also want to make sure you're holding on to that heater block while you're tightening the nozzle um, so that you're not putting any undue pressure on that. I think you made a video how to change the nozzle on the CR10, right? Uh, probably at some point. Probably at some point, or you may find it on, on my channel, but it will be in French. <laughs> so uh, that's the same way. If you want to unclog your heat brake, you have to remove the old uh, assembly. So the nozzle, the heat block, and the heat brake. So it's a little bit of work, but when it's clogged, there's no, way to, there's no other way to do it. One thing we talked about off camera is I was having difficulty with a metal filled filament that seemed to be under extruding just intermittently. Yeah. And one of the things you had mentioned was the particle size. Exactly. For example, we have here a wood filament. So um, when we print it with a 0.5 millimeter nozzle, um, you will see during the print some part, uh, some little clog, micro clog. Uh, it, it's normal because sometimes the particle inside the filament, for example, a wood filament is about 30% of a wood, uh, wood particle, so it may clog on a uh, 0.5 nozzle. So the recommendation is to use a 0.6 millimeter nozzle um, for a wood filament, or could be uh, aluminum filament, steel filament, bronze filament, maybe ISO diamond filament. Yeah, that diamond one, I want to try that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so another common issue, unfortunately too common, is layer shifting. And there are many things that can cause a layer shift, so it makes it a little bit tricky to troubleshoot. Here's a good example, or bad example, depending on how you want to think about it, of a layer shift. So this print is probably about 22 hours or so, I think. Yeah, and something like that. About halfway through, you can see there's this ridge here. So what happened is, if the print was, let's say it was printed in this orientation, that shift happened in the Y direction. So the Y stepper uh, could have skipped a step, or the belt could have skipped, uh, skipped a tooth, in which case it would be exactly two millimeters because that's the tooth spacing. Um, this is not two millimeters, so I don't think the belt uh, skipped in this case. And another thing that can happen is your grub screw that's on the, um, the pulley that's attached to the motor shaft if that grub screw isn't tight, or if your motor shaft doesn't even have a flat, uh, it could just be kind of spinning freely or wiggled loose and you'll end up with a, a quite a shift. But in this case, what was the issue, Dom? Well, I made this print with my printer and, well, the only thing I changed before I made this print is my drivers. So it was the voltage on my driver, it was a little bit too low. So on uh, a high acceleration, on back and forth movement, uh, the voltage was not enough, so I have to adjust my voltage on my driver. That was, and when the uh, sometimes when the driver is too hot, also it may cause this kind of problem. So in this case, it was my voltage on the driver. So I just crank it up a little bit, and uh, there's some calculation you can make based on which driver are you using. Uh, you are using, so you have to calculate based on the uh, power of the mo the stepper motor. And your driver, you have to calculate the right voltage, the reference voltage on your driver. And your driver's probably had that standard potentiometer adjustment for the voltage? Exactly. It was a TMC2208. And uh, with a multimeter, I have to, to adjust the, uh, the uh, reference voltage on my driver. So I do a right calculation, the right calculation, fix it. And now I've reprinted this one, but without layer shift this time. Perfect. 
And some other drivers, they don't use the potentiometer. If you happen to have the TMC uh, 2130s, mm -hmm. you actually control the uh, voltage via firmware. So the firmware has settings to set the voltage via SPI, I believe. Um, but there is still a potentiometer on them if you were not using that kind of smart uh, way of setting the reference voltages. Yeah, um, uh, a lot of printers use uh, the A4988 print, uh, drivers or the uh, DRV8825. So those are potentiometers that you have to adjust uh, on the driver. Another thing that can happen to your printer is you can end up with a tangled spool and it will sometimes just ruin your entire print or intermittently show up as a bit of under extrusion. And that's because there's a lot of tension on the filament as it's tangled up in here and your extruder is trying to pull it through and it simply can't. Sometimes it untangles itself or pulls itself free, but it'll likely just get caught up again. And that happens when you manhandle a spool usually. It's usually not the factory's fault. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, normally the best way to ruin a print is to, to mishandle uh, the spool. So you have this mark here to put the filament on. Be sure on when you remove the, the spool, you, you, you're always holding the end of the filament. Don't let it go like that because for sure it would spool around uh, with the other filaments and it will cross with other filaments. So you'll take your filament and after maybe 20 minutes of prints, it will jam. So it will ruin your, your, your print. So that's why it's always important to hold the extremity of your filament and when you're not using it, using, sorry, when you're not using it, just put it back on the appropriate space right there. There's some spool who don't have this little uh, mark here, so you have to print who are using some clips like this one to hold it on the side like that. So it's very important. Also, when your spool is brand new, it's full. So sometimes what's happened, one of the, uh, the, the filaments just go over the spool and do something like that. So be sure when the spool is brand new to, uh, to hold it tight when you're pa passing into uh, the extruder, just to be sure that the, the filament does, doesn't go outside of the spool and get this kind of situation. And when it's, when it's happened, you will uh, hear a sound like click, click, click. Normally the extruder is trying to pull out the filament and it's just grinding the filament uh, where the gear are. So it's happened. But yeah, it could be clicking because it's skipping steps. It could be the noise of the gear grinding against the filament. Yeah. And usually when that happens and you get it all straightened out, you're probably gonna have some shredded filament bits inside your gear assembly, your hob bolt area. So you might wanna blow that out and make sure that that's all clear. Um, in the case of a, of a Bowden setup, that would be at the back corner here instead of at the hot end area. Exactly. So one final thing I think we'll, we'll cover this evening is your bed cable getting caught on the back of the printer. So we've turned the printer around here, and in this case, it's a CR-10, we have the control box, and we have this pile of cables. Uh, it can become a bit of a rat's nest, and we've kind of done a worst case scenario here, but the cable is run underneath the foot in this case. So as the bed moves all the way to the front of the printer, it's actually gonna snag on that. Now that's gonna cause a couple things. Obviously it can cause your Y axis to skip a step. Uh, it could even cause you to skip a tooth. Um, it's not gonna allow the bed to move all the way to the front, that's for sure. And at the very least, it's gonna introduce artifacts into your print because that Y axis uh, movement is not smooth. You're gonna have kind of the, the vibrations from this rubbing against the back corner. More typically, it's just kind of caught around the corner like this, and you know, it can move a little bit further, but there's still going to be issues of sorts at the very least artifacts. Well, I know there's some extension that you can use to put here, and just between the control box and the bed, so you have a little bit more of uh, space to print more cables, so. Yeah, the Creality extension cables have these aircraft connectors on the end of them, so you just connect them into here, and I think it gives you about a meter extra. You can also move your box to a more convenient location. It doesn't exactly. have to be directly beside the printer. So that is one nice option. 
I have those on a few of my printers and I've opted not to use all of the extension cables because I didn't necessarily need them all to be longer. You know, the one reaching all the way over here is plenty long enough, but I definitely use the one for the bed and for the hot end uh, assembly. Exactly. Another problem I saw uh, on the CR10, also the Tornado, is when the control box is there and the uh, x-axis is lowering. So it's just push on the control box and it lifts the printer, lifts the printer, lift the printer yeah. so and ruin uh, the the prints. So be sure to move the control box outside this part. So you can print some blocks to put here, or just uh, put some uh, blocks or prints uh, un under the feet to uh, to make it higher. So it could be a solution, or just put it away with extension cables. So could be another solution. Yeah, that TiVo Tornado has exceptionally short cables. Oh yeah. I mean, the, the extension cables are nice on something like the CR10, but on that Tornado, if there were something like that, it, it should come with it right out of the box. Basically. Exactly. I mentioned that in our review as well. Yeah, or if your control box is a little bit too uh, far, the X-axis will, um, drag, it will tra drag it, exactly, yeah. Thanks for watching and thanks for joining me today, Dominic. It was nice to meet you. It was a pleasure to meet you guys and also uh, to be in your studio and your video. Thank you for this opportunity. So thank you very much. Awesome. And hopefully you guys at home found this uh, useful and uh, we'd like to do more troubleshooting videos like this in the future. Remember, like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we upload more content like this. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Everyone. <laughs> uh, merci uh, for watching. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, do it in French. Yeah, right. All right. Thanks for watching and thanks for joining us today, Dominic. It was a pleasure. You, uh... Sorry. Let's do that again. No, yeah, okay. interrupt okay. you. I should have. I should have. I interrupt you. Respond. you. Okay. Okay. Ready? Thanks for watching and thanks for helping me today, Dominic. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you for receiving me in your uh, studio. It was a pleasure to see the business to uh, laugh, 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 laugh. Laugh, laugh, Again? Uh, okay. All right, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I get to clap. Okay. It's my studio. It's his studio, but it's mine. Okay.